Hi everyone, Techno Geek Susan back again. Uh, I've got, got questions, a bunch of questions that have come in from the newsletter and the blog. And for those of you who don't get the newsletter and you want it, just go to the website, clickerdogs.com. On the left hand side, you'll see a place where you can sign up. It, newsletter is different than the blog, obviously, it gets sent to your email and it, it's up to date on what's going on here at Say Yes, as well as I throw in different dog training uh, tips. Last week, I think we talked about winter training. So, first of all, thank you very much for everybody who has sent in nice comments about the blog. I'm really glad you're enjoying it because I'm, I'm having a blast doing it. And reinforcement is good for any animal, so I appreciate hearing the, the lovely things you're saying. As for the questions, I've got a lot of questions, and I've divided them into two. So the questions that have come in about the weaving and some of the questions that have come up because of the new um, DVD or the ebook. Uh, those will be addressed tomorrow, and this is going to be just general questions that have been sent to me on the blog. I will try and answer them, but I, I can't turn this into a, a your own personal seminar. So if it, if you have a real quick question, I uh, I'll, I'll definitely try and get to it. Okay, this first one's from J A, and who enjoyed the video feature. Thank you, and wondering what contact performance. So. Uh, with feature, she has a running A-frame and a two-on-two-off two off with a nose touch on the dog walk and the seesaw. Uh, I've trained four of my dogs to run their A-frame and many of my students, uh, we've also trained their dogs to run their A-frame. However, if you're new to agility, it's unlikely I would encourage you, depending on what size of dog you have, maybe for a little dog, but for most dogs I would encourage you to do a two-on-two-off if you can get someone to teach that with a nose touch. It's a great, consistent performance. It's fast. Buzzy went through his entire career. His A-frame was a 1.2, 1.25 A-frame. And he didn't miss a single contact, not once in his life. Not a dog walk, A-frame, seesaw, it doesn't matter. Not once did he miss a, a contact. As a handler, I could be anywhere I wanted. So those are the benefits. Obviously, with it running contact, you have speed coming off of it. So you have to be... You know, there's just so much more dog training, and that's why I really wouldn't encourage it if you're relatively new to agility. So um, there's my advice on that one. Melissa, what happened to your role of the big dog, small dog? You wrote about in Shaping Success. All right, first of all, Melissa, thank you for reading Shaping Success. Secondly, uh, Decaf and John actually took a vote and decided they wanted their next dog to be a big dog. Uh, the truth is that decaf is not a confident dog, and although my last two Jack Russells, Shelby and Twister, they were amazing, stable dogs, you know, I, I can't take the risk, and so I decided for peace in the house, for John's sake, that we would go and have another big dog, and I can't say that I'm upset because Feature is just an awesome dog, and if there ever was a Jack Russell in a Border Collie body, it absolutely is Feature. So I, I will definitely be getting another small dog because I am a small dog person at heart. Uh, but for now, we have decaf and the big dogs. From Tara, uh, will you be offering another puppy camp this summer? Absolutely. We have a blast when we do puppy camps. So we try to get them three and, and maybe even four times a year. So there's no doubt there'll be one next summer. There'll also be one in the spring and uh, as many as we can get in there. From Steve, welcome to the blogosphere. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so Steve was curious why the phase one of the excellence and weave pull training had to go when phase two came on the market. So the reason for that is really the ebook was put out because I felt badly that everyone had to wait so long for the DVD. And the DVD was supposed to be out five years ago. And then, you know, it, it definitely was, was really close this summer, but I decided to add the second disc to the project. And I'm not sorry I did because it really completes the learning. It doesn't matter if you've got a dog who's never taught, been taught to weave or you've got a dog who's been weaving. That DVD set is going to, you're going to find great value in it regardless. So I just, um, added that second DVD and then our goal was October, the end of October. It didn't happen and that's when I launched phase one and said, here you go. There's stuff you can work on while you're waiting for the DVD. But the truth is I didn't want it to be a conflict. I didn't want people tying up our staff's time by emailing and asking, why do I have to buy the, the D DVD? Can I not just buy the book? And so as, as great as the information was in phase one, uh, it had to go so that there is just no, no conflict with what, what people should be ordering. 
that information will absolutely come back again in the future. It won't be in the same form. Uh, I promise that. It, it may be split up into different projects. Um, definitely won't be at that price. But um, I think that they were, they're both great, phenomenal resources for people. From Melissa. Uh, I wanted to ask this at puppy camp. This time around, I'll tether my pup to me in the house and while not training or in a crate and we'll use a long line outside. Is tethering a good idea? Yee. You know what, Melissa? I am not a fan. And you've seen my dogs and you see what a phenomenal attention they have to me. And I just look at tethering and using a long line as forcing a dog to like you. You want, you will, you will want to work with me. Our program is about two words, isn't it? It's about value in choice. So you, you build value by all the phenomenal games that we play with our dogs that you saw at puppy camp. They're outlined in, in Shaping Success and Rough Love, but at the same time, you're restricting access to outside reinforcement for that puppy. So you're trying to create a team, a great team, and to me, that's got to be inspired. It can't be forced. And so I have never tethered a dog to me. And the four dogs that I have right now, they've never ever been on a long line. If you, if you lay down the foundation, as I've outlined, then, you know, it's going to work. And I don't care if people say, I've got a three-eared hunting dog and it's not going to work with him. I had terriers. And our students, we've, you know, we've trained hundreds of dogs this way, and it absolutely works. So if you invest some time to create a dog that just wants to be with you, and the results are going to be phenomenal. Let fun for the dog and fun for you be what drives it all. From loan. So great, you're blogging. Uh, sometimes I get the feeling that everything has to be perfect and it's impossible for normal human beings to manage it. Do you have some advice? First of all, loan. I'd like to consider myself a normal human being. Um, but seriously, I absolutely understand what you're saying. That I see it with our own students who get so bogged down by the details of the program that they end up being frustrated by themselves and frustrating the dog. So in the end, it's not the incredibly reinforcing journey that I, I intend it to be. So my advice is this. Get things roughly right. Focus on the things that are really important to creating a great family pet and the things that are going to carry you into being great at whatever it is your chosen discipline is with your dog. That don't, don't get too bogged down. If you're consistent between your everyday life, the things that you expect, the, the restrictions you have for your dog, it will pay off um, in your dog training of, say, agility or obedience. Shots it really doesn't matter. My dogs are not perfect. And my dogs can be naughty. So there are things that, that, you know, people might look at and say, wow, I would never want my dog to, my dogs chase the vacuum. They like to attack the vacuum. It really doesn't affect me because I can't tell you the last time I touched the vacuum. So when John needs to vacuum, he has to put the dogs away. And uh, if the cleaning lady, when she vacuums, the dogs are either with me or I have them crated. Could I dog train the dogs to stop attacking the vacuum? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But I focus on the things that are important. If John find, said to me, I don't, you know, I want you to stop this, I, I could stop it. I don't get bogged down by making the be perfect. Not, you know, focus on the things that will create the great family pet and the rest will follow, fall into line for you. From Hope. Curious why you've chosen female dogs over male dogs. Um, okay, so I, I decided to get a male when I got Buzz because I thought it was important as a professional trainer to train a male dogs. And I'm crazy about Buzz. He's been a, an, an incredible dog and, and quite a gift for me. Uh, but quite honestly, I prefer tr training female dogs. And you could ask 100 trainers and you'd get different answers. Some of us prefer females and some of us prefer males. And I think the best thing to do is to sit in a litter of puppies and let your heart tell you what you should do because if you let them the puppy will tell you which one's intended for you okay from a reader in sweden uh i realize how much i hate your awesome tight turns i assume you mean my dogs um it ticks me off and i just can't get it okay so bottom line is how do i get my dogs to turn with that kind of understanding it's easy three things okay maybe it's not that easy handling do you have a consistent handling um, system that the dog can predict when you want those tight turns. We are great supporters of Greg Derrett. We follow his program and I believe it gives you all those things and it's proven with the students that have come through here that have applied the program and stuck with it. They've got great success. 
The next is a jump education. You can't expect the dog to t turn, turn tightly if you haven't taught him how to pick a proper takeoff point and all the things that go with Susan Salo's program that we absolutely follow and endorse here. Both of those you can get phenomenal DVDs from each of them to, to give you that education. And the last thing is the dog training. You have to work on the dog's uh, body awareness and then educate him how to take one jump appropriately and all that's laid out in my success with one jump DVD. There's great exercises that you can do with a pro with a puppy without any jumps in there so you can start young, follow it up and lay a layer of foundation upon a layer of foundation until you get those phenomenal tight turns. So it's the three things, the handling, the jump education, the dog training and, and uh, if you haven't done the, all the exercises on success with one jump, go back and do them. Okay, that's it for today, and uh, I'll follow us up tomorrow with, with some more questions um, sent in on weave training. Have a good day, everyone.